We finished assembling the frame, so let's get those rails in. Before I start, some quick notes. My videos will more or less follow the order of the assembly manual. Having that on hand is very useful as we proceed. Second, my tape measure from the last video is indeed short by half a millimeter. Those measurements were slightly off and I will need to adjust my bed extrusion spacing off camera. I will be cutting plastic boards later, so make sure your measuring tools are accurate. For self-sourcers, if you have not bought rails yet, note that they are 50 millimeters longer than the printer bed size. Therefore, this 300 printer needs 350 millimeter long rails. I also bought an extra MGN12H rail for the X axis. Unlike the other rails, there is only one of these used for the build, so I wanted to ensure I had the straightest one possible. Check for carriage binding or anything that requires a return, such as severely bent pieces. The rust preventative oil is easily removed with isopropyl alcohol. Do not remove the rubber stops. They prevent the carriage from sliding off the ends. If that happens, the tiny bearings fly out and you will have a bad day. I am using white lithium grease to spray both the bearings and rails. Slide the carriage back and forth and repeat as necessary. It becomes slippery so be careful not to drop the rail as that can also damage it. These rails look straight and they should be. If any are ever so slightly off, use those for the Z rails and save the perfectly straight ones for the gantry build later on. The printed guide helps you center the rails to the extrusions. You either printed these pieces yourself or got it all from PIF. Note there are two centering guides. We are using the one for the smaller 9mm rail. These rails have 18 mounting holes and skipping every other leaves one unused at the end. You can either use an extra T nut and screw or skip two mounting holes somewhere else. Since the bomb specs out 10 screws per rail, I'm just going to double up fasteners on the top two holes. Start tightening screws from the center outwards and this straightens any bow in the rail. We need to space out 3mm from the bottom, which is harder than it should be because none of my rail ends are cut square. Install the remaining Z rails and make sure they are facing the right direction. Otherwise, you will be popping out a lot of T-nuts. Speaking of popping out, that's what these end stops like to do, so you may want to tape or zip tie the carriages in place. Just for that peace of mind. Time for the deck panel. If you bought the corrugated plastic board, the manual does not specify how to notch out the holes. I literally thought you had to make your own by eyeballing it. Thankfully, I have had luck with Reddit for answering these types of questions. It appears these templates are on GitHub, and even then, you have to sift around for the right printer version you are building. Anything that may help you all are usually linked in the video description below. If you are not familiar with cutting this plastic, it's wise to practice on a scrap piece. These boards were not easy to find locally, so take your time planning this. Measure twice, cut once. Start with a relatively fail-proof piece, such as the back panel, which only requires a square cutout. A hard surface underneath makes for a cleaner cut and minimizes blowout on the bottom side. That side should end up looking cleaner if you make all your cuts from the top side. I found it easiest to cut with a utility knife, as many scissors aren't sharp enough. Power tools can be difficult to control if you don't have a jig. It's hard to mark a black finish, so I just used the knife to slice measurements. Following up with a hard shade edge gave me the best results. Note that it's easier cutting along the supports versus across it. By far, the worst piece to cut was the deck panel, which had multiple holes that needed to be measured somewhat precisely. You can see that the panel is not perfect, but is decent enough. If you want it flawless, just buy a pre-cut acrylic set online. It's a pretty big decision because once you mount the electronics, you have to remove everything if you decide to change or replace the deck panel. Since I don't have the dim rails yet, I'm going to secure the panel in place with oversized washers. Heat set inserts. Since I have never used these before, I bought extra and decided to practice on spare plastic. Unless you printed your own parts, with PIF you only get one chance to do it right. There is no easy way to remove heat sets without damaging the plastic. Make sure they are the correct dimensions and note there is a proper orientation when installing them. The bottom should drop inside the holes of the plastic parts. If it does not, stop and double check, because something is wrong somewhere. I found it easiest and most consistent to install them with the soldering iron pointed straight down from the top. Fortunately, my Ryobi has a temperature control, so I was able to experiment. If it's too hot, it may go in too fast, which means you better be sure it's going in straight. 
With temperatures too low, it takes too long. Somewhere in between, you have good speed, while still being able to adjust the direction if it starts going in crooked. My temp is set at one third power. I am setting it flush or ever so slightly below the surface. It's pretty straightforward after you do a few, and the biggest challenge is not burning yourself. You see my hand shaking? I accidentally forgot about a heat set on the blind side, and it got me while moving that piece around. Let the parts cool before attempting to screw them together, and don't let hot heat sets touch adjacent plastic. It may melt. Moving on to the belt drive. I bought a long 5mm rod that needs to be cut into 4 60mm pieces. I marked this out with a caliper and painter's tape. I am going to cut on the right side of the tape because it's better to have it a bit too long than short. I also measured the end that needs to be ground flat for the pulley set screws. Around 15 millimeters should be sufficient. You can either use an angle grinder or Dremel. The angle grinder cuts faster, but the blade is thicker and makes it harder to see the cut. I am using the Dremel and there are two types of cutting wheels. The ones on the left explode, the reinforced ones on the right don't. Without either tool, you are likely stuck with a hacksaw and sweat equity. I placed the rod in a notched piece of wood to prevent the cut piece from flying off somewhere. This should also make for a cleaner cut. For grinding the flats, you can use the same tools from earlier with different discs. I am using a bench grinder, which also takes care of any jagged cuts or imperfections. If you don't have any of these, time to bust out that knife sharpening block and more physical work. The 9mm pulley is secured 33mm away from the end, with one of the two set screws securing against the flat we grinded. You must use thread locker on these screws because there are vibration and rotational forces that will loosen them over time. Check that the pulleys and belt teeth have the round profile of the GT2 or 2GT type. If you see sharp edges, then you likely got the wrong MXL type. From right to left, the assembly order is 625 bearing, shaft with pulley, two M5 shims, another 625 bearing, two more shims, the 80 tooth pulley, and one more 625 bearing. I opted to assemble this in the housing so I can check fitment before set screwing the larger pulley. If you decide to do this, a reminder not to let thread locker drip onto the plastic parts. Note that the three bearings should be within their grooves. And silly me, I forgot to grind flats for the large pulley. I had to disassemble and bring all four shafts back outside. At least I found out now instead of later. Note that every piece including and between the two pulleys must be pressed tight. Otherwise, once you mount it, you will have left and right slop when it spins. This is depicted in the manual, but without any text, it's easy to miss. When I fasten plastic pieces, I like to use the short end of the Allen key. That way, it's harder to over tighten. You do not need to torque down hard on these fasteners. Just make sure the belt is installed or else you have to remove screws and pieces if you forgot. For the Z drive motors, I like to first test the wires for continuity. That way we don't do all this work just to find out that the motor is a dud at the end. Using the jig, make sure the 16 tooth pulley is at the proper height and screw it down. Continue with installing the front left Z0 motor. Find the proper corner, install T-nuts, screws, and line up the drive. I used an extrusion piece to square the edges. There is a locking tab that tensions the belt properly. Check that the belt path is relatively straight. If you are using a different motor, you may have to flip the motor pulley for better fitment. Attach the rubber feet and repeat once more for the diagonal Z drive. Then build the cross diagonals which use mirrored looking parts. For the Z idlers, there is no need to tighten down the nut and bolt at the very top. This tensioner will be loosened when we install the Z belts. Also, pay attention when you screw the M5 bolt through the 9mm pulley. There are no threads inside the accent pieces, you have to make your own. Start the bolt as straight in as possible. At the end, you don't need to crank down on it. There should be some left and right play in the pulley. Mount the Z0 idler by pushing it hard against the corner before tightening the two screws. Repeat on the opposite corner, and as with the drives, build and attach the diagonal idlers, which also use mirrored pieces. And that's it for this section. At the beginning, I mentioned how my videos will roughly follow the assembly manual. However, it's not completely step by step. The manual already does a pretty good job explaining how to build a printer. I figured a better way to help people was to focus on issues I encountered. Things that were easy to miss, weren't documented well, 
weren't documented at all, or simply outside the scope of the manual. The next section is the build plate install, but I am going to skip ahead to the AB drive and idler assembly. The plate I want is currently out of stock and we can always install that later. If anyone has recommendations for pre-drilled plates that are in stock, please leave a comment below and see you all next time.